This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. As our source, as our helper, as our evidence for better life, winning can become a habit. So today we're looking at winning habits, the habit that produce success. Number one habit is the habit of trusting God. If you are going to be successful, if you are going to excel, you need to cultivate the act of trusting God. What are the benefits of trusting God? It keeps your hope alive. One of the benefits of trusting God is that it keeps your hope alive. It sustains your focus in the right direction. It inspires you to do the impossible. So the habit of trusting God Psalm 23, verse 1. The psalmist said, The Lord is my shepherd. He said, I shall not want. When you trust God, it puts you in a position of hope, strength, and confidence. So cultivate the habit of trusting God We have to see God's word as our final authority. If you are going to trust God, you have to trust him according to his word. I said, if you're going to trust God, you're going to trust him according to his word. The word of God is the foundation of faith. If we're going to live by faith, or walk by faith, it is because we have the knowledge of God's word. To trust God successfully, we have to continuously renew our mind with his word. One of the key success habits is the habit of renewing your mind with God's word. I just told you trusting God can become a habit, a habit of trusting God. If it has to do with your health, you learn to trust him for healing and health. If it has to do with your business, you have to trust him. If it has to do with your vision or your calling, you have to trust him. These things happen when we trust God. And trusting God can be perfected in such a way that no matter what we see, we know that victory is sure. Trusting God can be perfected. You can perfect yourself in the act of trusting God that no matter what you see or what you go through, victory is sure. No matter what you see, no matter what comes your way, victory is sure. The act of renewing your mind with God's word is another winning habit. In Romans 12, verse 2, Romans 12, verse 2, he said, we should not be conformed to this world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind. The renewing of the mind empowers you to see possibility. The renewing of the mind, it has to be daily to be productive and effective. It has to be daily for it to be productive and effective. It cannot be productive and effective if it is not daily. So daily we have to renew our mind with God's word. Philippians 2 verse 5. 
He said, let his mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. The mind of Christ is the mind that is born out of the word of God. The mind of Christ, to have the mind of Christ means I have to renew my mind according to the word of God. That is what makes my mind to become the mind of Christ. I have to renew my mind with God's word to think like Jesus, to walk like Jesus. So success habits of winning is cultivating the habit of renewing your mind with God's word as you can see things in the direction of the will of God. All renewed mind cannot tap into the energy of God. All renewed mind, if your mind is not renewed, you can't tap into the energy of God. There is a limitation to a vision when the visionary mind is unrenewed. If a visionary has an unrenewed mind, if a visionary has an unrenewed mind, it will be difficult for him to see possibilities. And that was why the scripture said we should not be conformed to this world. We should be transformed by the renewing of our mind. When our mind is renewed, we are empowered to manifest the impossible. When our mind is renewed, we are empowered to manifest the impossible. All renewed mind cannot manifest the impossible. But the mind that is renewed can manifest the impossible. We renew our mind according to the revelation of the finished work of Jesus. Every victory that Jesus has given to us, we need to have revelation in that area. Every victory that Jesus gave to you, you need to have a revelation in that area. And it's so important that we have revelation knowledge if our faith is going to be productive. So don't forget, all renewed mind cannot be productive, cannot be effective, and cannot sustain vision. Your mind has to be renewed for you to see things in the direction of the will of God. Your mind has to be renewed. If your mind is not renewed, you can't see things the way God wants you to see them. If your mind is not renewed, you can't make progress according to the will of God. Renewed mind produce uncommon results. Another success, another winning habit is the habit of standing on God's promises. The habit of standing. You always stand on the promises of God. No matter what the situation is, you stand on the promises of God. Thanks, some words have been saying. David believed that the battle was not his, that the battle was of the Lord. Because he stood on God's promises, he made progress. Standing on the promises of God empowers you to accelerate in your vision. Standing on the promises of God, you stand on God's promises. That's one of the key things that leads to victory. That no matter the situation you're seeing, let the revelation of God's word prevail. Prevail on your mind. No matter what I'm seeing, I stand on the promises of God. My situation should not distract me from acting on God's word. My situation shouldn't distract me from acting on the word of God. The promises of God opens the door for the miraculous. 
if we want to see the miraculous, if we want to see signs and wonders, then we need to believe in the promise of God. Faith in God's promises can turn an impossible situation to a possible one. Faith in God's promises can turn an impossible situation. The promises of God contains the energy of God. It contains his energy. It contains his presence. No matter what you're dealing with, look at what God's word have said and make that your focus. Faith in the promise of God is the key to overcoming the giants. Faith in the promises of God is the key to overcoming the giants. Whatever giants you're seeing, whatever situation you're seeing, faith in the promise of God is the key to overcoming the giant. There are a lot of people, when they see situations, they don't see the promises of God as the way out of that situation. All they see is what is around them. No, you look beyond the situation and see what God's word is saying. You look beyond the situation and see what God's word is saying. The word works. It contains the energy of God. It contains the ability of God. It has the power to break limitation and produce uncommon miracles. The word of God works. The word of God is powerful. Another winning habit is the habit of stewardship. That's another winning habit. The habit of stewardship. One of the keys to supernatural promotion is becoming a faithful steward of that which you have received from God. God has put his anointing on our lives, graces on our lives, gifts on our lives, finances. There are so many things that God has put in our lives but are we faithful stewards of those resources? Becoming a faithful steward unlocks the impossible. One of the ways you unlock the impossible is to become a faithful steward. Faithful when it's not convenient. Faithful when it's stressful. Faithful when most people will not be faithful. Faithfulness is not one time thing. It's not something you just do one time or twice. Faithfulness can become a habit. Faithfulness can become a habit. And faithfulness become a habit by decision. I said faithfulness becomes a habit by decision. That's how faithfulness becomes a habit. It becomes a habit by decision. If I don't make the right decision, if I don't make the right decision, I cannot excel in the things of the Spirit. If I don't make the right decision, I cannot excel in the things of the Spirit. So faithfulness is a decision. I choose to be faithful. To be faithful means you are disciplined to stay with what is right, irrespective of how you feel. To be faithful means to be disciplined to stay with something until it works. And faithfulness is one of the habits of those who win. So God puts resources in our hands. God has put the grace of teaching on my life. I can't merchandise it. I have to use it for his glory. I have to steward this gift of teaching people, equipping people to live the God life. And it takes faithfulness for we to stay with what God has called us to do, becoming a steward 
of the gifts of God, becoming a steward of the gift of God, those resources that God has put in your life. So one of the ways you cultivate, you cultivate winning habits is by staying with those instructions that God has given to you. You stay with those instructions in good time or in bad time. So stewardship is key. Stewardship is key. The stewardship of your finances, your time, your talents, your graces, the anointing on your life. You must learn to steward those things, to be faithful in the use of them, knowing that one day you'll be giving God an account of how you steward the anointing, how you steward the relationship, the opportunities, the platform, the privileges that God gave to you, how you were able to steward those things, how you were able to steward those things that God puts in your life. If you're truly going to excel and win in life, stewardship is the key. Stewardship is the key. And we win by stewardship. Another habit, winning habit, is a habit of focus. Is the habit of focus. Focus. Becoming a focused person. Focus is not a gift. There is no gift of focus. Focus is born out of decision to make a difference. Focus. You cannot do anything big in this life if you are not a focused person. Because there are so many distractions around us. There are so many distractions. And focus is an intentional action. Focus is an intentional action. Focus is putting your attention in the right direction. Focus is putting your attention in the right direction. That's focus. Is you putting your action in the right direction, giving attention to that which matters. Focus is born out of discipline. Discipline. It takes discipline to stay with something. And discipline is not a gift. Discipline is a decision that is backed up by conviction and commitment. Discipline is a decision that is backed up by conviction and commitment. Conviction and commitment, you stay with it. No matter what is happening, you stay there. No matter what the storms of life may try to bring, you stay there. In good times or in bad times, you stay there. Discipline. And focus, like I told you, is not a gift. The reason why a lot of people cannot achieve their goal is because they are distracted. Focus is a decision. Focus is commitment. Focus is energy. Focus is a decision. Focus is commitment. Focus is energy. It's energy. When you have focus, you're energized. There are a lot of people who can stay with something for a long time. If you can cultivate the habit of focus, there is no limit to what you can achieve in this life. Becoming a focused person when you don't feel like it. Your body is tired, but you need to walk. You don't feel like going there, but you know you need to go there. Focus is when you override every distraction and decide to make a difference. You override every distraction and decide to make a difference. You override every distraction. You override every distraction, every form of distraction that is coming you override it and decide to make a difference. That's focus. 
the way financial extraction, emotional extraction, relationship extraction, marriage extraction, children extraction, you override all the distraction and stay with that which will move you to your destination. That's focus. Focus is not born out of convenience. Focus is born out of decision. Sometimes you want to do something and there are all kinds of waves of distraction. Because to be a focused person, it means you have chosen the path of stability. To be a focused person means you have chosen the path of stability. To be focused. So cultivating a habit of focus. How do I cultivate the habit of focus? Put your attention on things that increase your energy. Put your attention on the things that increase your energy. Put your attention on the things that increase your purpose. Put your attention there. Put your attention there on the things that increase your energy, on the things that empower you. Put your attention there. Put your attention on the things that increase your energy. You cultivate focus by establishing boundaries. You cultivate focus by establishing boundaries. Boundaries to let yourself know that I can't go to this extreme. I can't go to this one. This is my direction. You cultivate focus by establishing boundaries. You cultivate focus, focus by reevaluating your activities. One of the ways you cultivate focus is to reevaluate your activities and know what is important and what is not important. If you're going to be a focused person, you need to reevaluate the things you do. You reevaluate your attitude. Is this attitude helping me to go forward or is helping me to go backward? Some attitude and it's intentional attitude. People can decide to behave a particular way. They make it a lifestyle. But when you notice that that lifestyle is not helping you to be who you ought to be, you make a decision. I'm not, I don't want to go this way. I don't want to live like this. If you don't make an intentional decision, it will be difficult for you to accelerate in the pursuit of your vision. You have to make an intentional decision. This is not the way I'm going to. I'm going to be focused. What are those things that distract me? What the things I hear, I need to judge them. Are they adding to me or they are distracting me? To be a focused person means you're willing to release the greatness in you. A lot of millions of people, billions of people today in our world are not focused people. You can't see them being consistent. And consistency is a decision. To be consistent is a decision. I've been doing this online church for over close to five years to six years right now. Sometimes I don't feel like doing it. Sometimes I don't feel like coming. But I have to come because it's my assignment to teach. It has nothing to do with feeling. It has everything to do with discipline. If you're listening to your feeling, you will never fulfill your destiny. If, you're, if your life is governed by feeling, you won't be able to make it in life. Because feeling has to be judged in the context of purpose. I don't feel like doing it. But what is the consequences of me not doing it? I need to check the consequences. Your feelings should not be detected for you. Your purpose should be detected. Your purpose, your assignment, the things that God has called you to do should be what is detecting and deciding the pace. So focus is not a gift. Focus is not a gift. People decide to be focused. People decide to be disciplined. People decide to be consistent. 
to be consistent. People decide to be reliable. It's a decision for you to be able to do it. There are certain things I wouldn't have been able to do if I'm not disciplined. I wouldn't be able to do them. Why? The situation that surrounds me tells me you cannot do it. And it takes understanding for we to interpret our future. I want to say that again. It takes understanding for we to interpret our future. We cannot successfully interpret our future without understanding. We cannot. So focus is not a gift. Focus is an intentional action. Focus is not a gift. Focus is an intentional action. If you see someone being focused, it's because they're intentional about it. They're intentional about it. It's not a gift. They're intentional. I want to do this. I want to stay with this. No matter what is happening, this is my commitment. The next thing we need to cultivate is the discipline to know when to say yes and when to say no. The next thing, if you're going to, one of the winning habits is, uh, is cultivating the discipline to know when to say yes and when to say no. Mastering the act of saying yes and mastering the act of saying no. You know you can't handle that project. You said, no, I can't handle it. You know you can't be able to do this. No, I can't be able to do it. You know you can't be able to do this. Yes, I can do this. Being able to master the act of no and yes will make all the difference in your life. Knowing when to say no. Knowing when to say yes is very key to success. Yes. Yes. Some relationships are stressful. So the question is, can you handle the stress that comes from that relationship? If the answer is no, you give them a break. Can you handle the wave of the extraction that comes from that relationship? Yes. God has led me to be there. So because you said yes, then you have to develop the capacity to handle the relationship. The ability to understand yes and no is strategic for your purpose. Knowing when to say yes and knowing when to say no is so important. You can't say yes all the time. You can't say no all the time. So you have to know when to say no and when to say yes. Know what you can handle and know what you cannot handle. Know what is within your range of strength and know what is not within the range of your strength. Another success habit is the habit of integrity. The habit of integrity. You know, integrity is so powerful that when people cannot rely on what you're saying, it means you have a problem. Your word should be yes when it's yes, and your word should be no when it's no. If, if I don't have integrity, I can destroy what I'm building. So part of the winning habit is a habit of integrity. Integrity is keeping your word. You said you would do it, you went ahead and did it. Hallelujah. Integrity is keeping your word. And if a person is not a person of integrity, it should be difficult for them to enjoy collaboration with other people. Why? Because people don't trust them. They are going to drop the ball. So integrity is a very strategic key when it comes to the pursuit of success. The next thing is excellence. Having the mentality of excellence. Part of the winning habit is the habit of excellence. Doing things right even when most people refuse to do it right. Doing things right when others are not willing to make the sacrifice that will make them do things right. Doing things right. Excellence. 
must be part of your thinking, must be part of your culture, must be part of your way of seeing things, becoming an excellent person. Excellent. The Bible said, and can give God an excellent offering. Sorry, an Abel, sorry. And Abel gave God an excellent offering. Why was he excellent? Why did God have respect for Abel's offering and not Cain? An excellent spirit is required in the pursuit of your victory. Excellent spirit is required doing things with excellence. Your things must be well done. You can't do things haphazardly and just you do it this way, that way, and expect people to take you. No. Some people will tolerate you, but not all the people. Some people will tolerate your mediocrity in some places, but it's not everyone that will tolerate what that, what that you're doing. But there are those that can tolerate you. But there are those that only tolerate excellence. They tolerate excellence. So if you're not a person of excellence, they don't want to work with you. Excellence should be part of your watch world. Whatever you do, do it well. Whether it's spiritual things, physical things, natural things, whatever you do, I said what? Do it well. Do it with passion. Do it with a drive. Do it in such a way that God is glorified. Cultivating an excellent attitude, an attitude of honor, respect, care. Cultivating an excellent attitude. Excellence is important. I've seen a lot of people that could have gone very far with their life, but the culture of excellence is far from them. They do things the way they, they want to do it. They don't do things the way they were expected to do it. Your, your company expected you to do it this way. You said, no, I want to do it this way. An excellent person takes instructions. Hallelujah. Another winning habit is the habit of learning and listening. Another winning habit is the habit of learning and listening. Learning and listening. If you are not learning and you are not listening, you are losing. If you are not learning and you are not listening, you are losing. Learning is part of your everyday living. Choose to learn. You know, when you begin to learn, you start adjusting. There are areas where you ought to adjust. But when you learn and listen, you begin to make those adjustments. I've seen people that feel instruction could have just changed their life, but they're not teachable. One of the winning habits is to be teachable, is to have a tender heart, being teachable. When you're teachable, it is easy for God to send instructors with instruction your way. When you're teachable, there are a lot of believers that are not teachable. The one thing their way, if it doesn't go their way, they're mad, they're angry. No, when you're teachable, it means you're cultivating an attitude of greatness. Be teachable. Choose to learn. Choose to improve. Choose to make progress. Learning must be your everyday thing. Learning must be your everyday thing. That every day you're learning, you're learning, you're learning. Why? That's how you make progress. That's how you excel in life. That's how you win in life. Learning must be the foundation for greater possibility. Are you learning? Are you listening? Cultivate the habit of listening. I want to listen. I want to learn. These are the winning habits. Listening. The next one, cultivating an attitude of forgiveness, love, and care. It's a winning attitude. Forgiveness, love, and care. Let me say this to you. A lot of people are dying before their time. And resentment is responsible for a lot of deaths, especially in the body of Christ. Resentment, unforgiveness, bitterness, offense. All of those things are toxic to your body. Unforgiveness, bitterness. Something happened five years ago, you haven't let go. Something happened 10 years ago, you're still carrying it fresh in your heart. It means you're not growing. The proof that you're growing, you're laying aside the weight. Hebrews 12, 
verse 1 to 2. Part of it is a lay aside every weight. Lay aside weight. First Peter chapter 2, talking about uh, as, as newborn, they decided to send me of the word. He told them to lay aside every hypocrisy, malice, unforgiveness. Those things will choke your faith. The reason why most people are not winning, so much unforgiveness and bitterness is battling with them. Release the hearts. Release your destiny from slavery. Release the hearts. Release your destiny from slavery. You have to release the heart. You forgive, you love, you care, you move on. Don't carry something too long. Brother Hagin said something many years ago. He said, be quick to forgive. Be quick to repent. Be quick to believe. Be quick to forgive. Be quick to repent. Be quick to believe. If you want to walk in the supernatural, you must practice this three. You're quick to forgive. You're quick to repent. You're quick to believe. It's so important that you let go. Quick to forgive. Quick to repent. Quick to believe. Quick to forgive. Quick to repent. Quick to believe. I choose to let go. You don't let go because it's convenient. You let go because it's necessary. You don't let go because it's convenient for you. You let go because it's necessary. One of the benefits of walking away from resentment is to protect your health. It's to protect your health. When you walk in unforgiveness, in bitterness, and in malice, it chokes your faith. That was why Mark 11, if you read to, from verse 23 to 24, talking about if you, if you stand praying, and you notice you have a heart against any, he said, he let go. He said, forgive. When you stand praying, reason why most prayers are not answered, unforgiveness is at work, robbing them the joy of receiving answers from heaven. Unforgiveness robbed them from receiving answers from heaven. Another winning habit is the habit of being led by the Spirit. Cultivating a lifestyle of being led by the Holy Spirit. That's another way we have it. Romans 8 14, he said, As many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Learning to depend on the Holy Spirit is a winning habit. Concerning your business, your marriage, your ministry, depend on the Holy Ghost. Concerning those financial decisions, depend on the Holy Ghost. The Spirit is foundational. For you to unlock the impossible. Finally, if you want to develop a winning habit, the habit of meditating on God's word. Meditating. Joshua 1 verse 8. God said to Joshua, part of it, that if you meditate on this Lord day and night, you will make your way prosperous. The prosperity of Joshua came by meditating on the word of God. Meditation is not weakness. Meditation is strength. Meditate on the word. Think about it over and over and over. As you meditate, you unlock inspiration. You unlock revelation. You unlock wisdom. Wisdom for the situation. When you have it, are important. Finally, let me add this. Planning. You must plan ahead. You must plan. What do I want to achieve with my life? You plan, you set goals. Your plan, you set goals, you set targets. You set goals, you set targets. You plan. Those who plan will meet their way. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you this morning. Let's just give God praise for this service this morning. Father, we thank you this morning for the time of sharing. I pray for everyone on this broadcast by your spirit. They'll be strengthened and they'll be empowered. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that God will strengthen you. And give you more grace, more strength. As you have listened to this message on the winning habit, that you will rise and excel in the things of the Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to take our offering next morning, this uh, Sunday service. I'm going to take our offering next morning and our offering, our tithe, whatever you want to give. 
You do it unto the Lord. You do it with a clean heart and expect God to touch your life and change your story. So we're about to give right now. The Bible talk about those who sow sparingly live sparingly. Those who sow bountifully also with the same. There is important value that God place on offering, on tithes. So we'll give our offerings and our tithes. We are advancing our lives, not the life of the preacher. Giving has to be a rough life. And that's how you prosper in the things of the Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, we'll prove our offerings of our tithes. We'll prove our supernatural increase. We pray that need be met, bills be paid. In Jesus' mighty name, we're prayed. I pray that this offering that you give today is so that see that God will open doors of miracles, doors of signs and wonders, doors of supernatural blessings, that you prosper in all you do. The work of your hand continue to excel. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You can go to finishworktv.com and slash giving, or you can go to teaching at gmail.com. Hallelujah. I'm going to be here on, th- on Wednesday and on Thursday for a life transforming service on Wednesday and on Thursday. And the time is 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and 5 a.m. Central Time. Looking forward to seeing you. You can get our books by going to Amazon.com. There's greatness in you. And for the things you need to know about your futures available on Amazon.com. How to run a global business from any location is just available. There is my book on business. And I encourage you to get it today. And your life will not remain the same. Until our next broadcast, don't forget this. There's greatness in you. And Jesus is coming soon. Amen. And God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. I love you. And enjoy your winning habit. Play back and enjoy it. Love you. Thank you.